Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today we're going to do one by request. This is a Finor. It's the Finor Lethal LT. It's a seven ball bearing reel. It's the 40 size reel, which means it handles easily between eight and 12 pound test. And uh, the capacity is right around 250 yards of uh, 10 pound test. It does have a little rubber uh, insert here so that you can use braid. And uh, if you use braid, you'll get a little bit more either strength of line or you will get more uh, capacity for the, uh, the line strength that you're using. So we're going to start by taking off the exterior pieces and parts and while we do I want to uh, encourage you to subscribe to my channel and if you do subscribe to my channel please use the notification button to let you know when I am posting the uh, videos and uh, I work on all kinds of reels. Today we're working on a uh, medium size spin fishing reel. Tomorrow it may be a trolling reel for deep sea and the next day it may be a light duty uh, best, best reel uh, or pond reel and uh, everything in between. So if you uh, use that notification button you'll certainly see what's being uh, serviced and you'll be able to learn from that if you like the art of fishing reel repair. We just removed the spool and the button. There was a lot of grease sitting on there, so I just mopped up some of that. We'll come back and service that uh, spool in a little bit. Notice we have one of those seven ball bearings is actually the spool bearing for the um, um, backpedaling on the, the drag when the drag is, is loosened. We're going to take the handle off. And now we have a case that has four screws in it, so let's go ahead and take those off. Those can be either a uh, Phillips head or a flat bladed screw. It has a th slot that runs fully through it. So whatever you're comfortable with. And generally I like to use the um, Phillips head screwdriver in those situations. While I'm doing that I'm noticing that we have two spool bearings on there. So this is one of those indications where you see a lot of bearings being presented in a number of the reels but well, they may not necessarily be where you want them uh, or need them, if you will. So I'm always asked um, quite frequently, how many bearings do you need in a reel? And my general stock answer is three works. Anything beyond that is probably uh, less of an advantage than you might think. You need one on each side of the main gear and you need one on the pinion gear. The rest of them, yes, they'll make the reels operate smoother. But I think the improvements probably are marginal. And sometimes you find bearings in places that don't even make sense. And it seems to me that uh, Okuma seems to be one of those that, uh, well, I just was on one the other day for an Okuma. I think it advertised 15 bearings or something. It's just getting a little silly. I took those case screws out. All four of them are the same. You want to make a note of that as you take them out because sometimes they're not. And then as I take the pieces and parts off, I put them into a parts tray. My parts tray happens to be the bottom of a fast food container. And we'll uh, remove that side plate now to get a look inside. Side plate goes on, another bearing here. And what we want to do at this point is remove the axle shaft so that we can get to service the rest of the reel. Well, wouldn't you know it, Finor is just... Uh, made life fun for me because the insert screw for that axle shaft is a Torx screw. Sometimes I think they just want to play around a little bit with you. Well, I happen to have the, the Torx screw set. I got this one at uh, Home Depot. It's a Milwaukee one and I can't tell you how many times I wind up using these because it seems that uh, for whatever reason the uh, manufacturers use something that's convenient for them but not necessarily convenient for anybody who has to service the wheel. It's all about their machine tools. With that screw removed, hold the, uh, the tie down and pull up on the axle shaft to remove it. That one came out nice and easy which is an indication that it's not bent or, or warped or anything. We've got the two bearings on there Give them a spin, put some oil on them, give them a little drink. And then wipe off the little bit of dirt that's up on the top of that shaft. And put that shaft into your parts tray. Before we get too much further, you remove the bearing. Notice that there's a shim washer 
on the back of that bearing for the main gear. Remove the main gear and its bearing. I'm going to give each of those a drink of oil. Please use fishing reel oil. You can buy a combination kit with the oil and the grease online for about $10 or maybe $12. To me, I'm not partial to any particular manufacturer's greases and oils, but I do like to encourage you to use fishing reel greases and oils when you service your reel. And for the $10 or so that it costs for that combination pack, uh, there's no sense trying to substitute something else. All right, we have the majority of the grease off of that. I'm going to use a hard brush to scrub the channels of the teeth. I want to get any remaining grease that's in those teeth out. You can see the shim washers that came off when I turned that upside down. Those shim washers take up the gaps in the, uh, or the variances in the machining of these pieces. And they can be anywhere from one to like three or four. Check all the grooves now, make sure all the teeth are, are nice and uniform, not damaged. Do it on the front and the back. Also check the points, make sure that it's not warped. This one's in good stead. I'm going to use some fishing reel grease now. I'll use uh, pen precision reel grease. Just a little bit of that onto the cleaned teeth here. You don't have to overload the, the, the gears. Get enough on there that it makes a difference. It'll spread. And then I'm going to put that one into the parts tray as well. So one of the things I can actually do at that point if I wanted to is put those bearings back on, but we'll just let them sit for now. Let's get the let's get the crosswind block out, crosswind gear out, and let's clean the back of the case here. So we're going to use a penetrating oil for that. In this case, I'm using WD-40, but again, I have no preference for which uh, penetrating oil you use. I use it as a degreaser. I don't use it as a lubricant. Well, I, I can't say that. I do use it as a lubricant. I do use a lubricant on bicycle chains. And even there, it seems to collect a lot of dirt. But, but in fishing reels, I stick with fishing reels, greases, and oils, and not, uh, not other stuff. Well, it looks like there's a little scarring going on in this case. Not quite sure what that's all about, but it appears that there's some kind of rub was going on there. Let's clean off the oscillation gear. Front and back. I use whatever I can. It's the lightest or least abrasive. In this case, I'm using a cotton swab. I'm going to put that into the piece and paper towel so it's not going to scar the, uh, the gears. And it is going to clean it off and absorb any of those old greases. A little piece there. All right, let's go into the tray. And now we can go up top and service that. Well, the first thing I want to make sure is that the bale is tripping okay. It's a little tight. So what you want to do here, you don't need to disturb the bale as long as it's tripping. Just oil the seams of the bale. Sometimes it's just the old squeaky bail gets the, uh, the oil and it works fine. If it, uh, if it continued to have a problem tripping, you can see right now it's just, just a little bit of oil by itself. It's tripping it fine. If you had trouble with that trip, then you might want to get adventurous and start taking off the, the bail springs and the like. But as part of a normal service, you do not need to do that unless, of course, you're having an issue with that. I just removed the tie-down screw. Is there a little collar that holds the rotor nut in place. And then we need to find the right uh, wrench for the rotor. In this case, it looks like it's a 12 millimeter. I have a 12 millimeter socket tool here. It's part of an old Mitchell uh, tool set, but it works on everybody's reel. It's got a 12 millimeter nut. Once I break the, the hold of that nut, I like to remove it, the rest of it by hand. And then let's pull up and off with this. When you do that, make sure that the inside of the rotor is clean. Particularly if you've been fishing in saltwater environment or the like, you may find that there's a lot of dirt. Sometimes if a reel gets dunked, well, it shows up there. 
and sometimes if it's in a muddy environment, well, you'll have that as well. This is our clutch assembly now. You can see the ramp that's going to drive the bale to trip. That's the side ramp here. We have two screws holding down the anti-reverse clutch and pinion gear. So those are the next to come out. And this time it looks like the flat bladed screwdriver is a better option than the Phillips head for removing this collar. While I'm doing that, if you have any questions on this reel or any reel, please leave them in the comments section. I'll try to answer them for you. I answer all kinds of questions there. Some of them have to do with uh, trying to help you through a uh, reel repair. Maybe you've started something and you're stuck along the way. Uh, sometimes it's just about the history of a reel. For example, Finwar. Finwar was founded in a machine shop in Florida in the 1930s. I think if I remember it was 1936. The machine shop specialized in uh, boat repair, boat building and boat repair, I guess. And the machine shop was named for its owners, Finley and Norwood. Now they didn't make the reel. Another fellow made the reel. I think his name, if I remember, was Frederick uh, Greiton, maybe. Uh, this is kind of pushing my memory now. But at any rate, another fellow developed the reels. But they carried the Finor name, and that uh, was a natural follow-on for their boat service business. Well, today Finor is owned by uh, Pen Reels, or actually Pure Fishing. Pure Fishing owns Pen Reels, and a whole bunch of other brands. They own Van Stahl, and they own um, Pen Abu. All kinds of reels. Fluger, Shakespeare, lots of brands. All right, with that collar off, we should be able to remove the set. Take a picture here. That's always my advice to anybody who's working on a reel themselves. Pictures are worth those thousand words, right? If you get stuck along the way in your servicing of the reel, then you can go back and look at that picture and it'll help get you back on track. All right, I'm taking one of those oil bearings, the small one that belongs in the back case. It's a good time to put that in. We're going to remove the anti-reverse clutch and assembly. There's an inner ring here for the clutch, the collar or spacer. You want to make sure that you clean that off. That should be dry. So if you find that there's a lot of oil on there, and sometimes maybe you've oiled, or tried to oil the bearing by uh, squirting some through the uh, the pinion shaft, it's going to cause, or can cause, the anti-reverse clutch to skip. Notice on your anti-reverse clutch you have a metal side and you have a plastic side. The plastic side on this wheel belongs down. Next up then is that bearing that matters to me. It's the bearing on the pinion. So this one has three of the bearings in the right place and that's the important ones to me. I'm going to oil that bearing, let it sit off to the side and soak in. And then we have the pinion gear. And those of you that watch my channel know what comes next. We're going to take a, a bristle brush, in this case just a soft uh, bristle brush. You can use a wire brush if it's stubborn. Um, those come in a couple of different flavors, right? They come in steel wire and they come in uh, the, the brass brushes and that, whatever works for you. But in this case, that, uh, that just cleaned up nicely with that. I'm going to use that fishing wheel grease now to get a good amount of grease onto the pinion gear. And we can go ahead and put that right back together. That's why those pieces that are laying on my table there did not go back into the parts tray. Because I knew that we were going to be working on that real quick. Okay, the bearing goes on. The collar goes on. Yeah, the reverse clutch goes on. You can test that right here if you like. Spin it, see if it stops. It does. Let's just take a cotton swab here and clean out a little bit of grease that's sitting in that cavity there. And then we can go right back in and install this. Once that is back in, go ahead and get your tie down collar. Go your parts tray and get the two pieces that will hold that down, the two screws.
And this is the one where the flat bladed screwdriver seems to do better than the other. So I'm really at a loss here in terms of why they decided that they were going to put one Torx screw in the whole reel. It almost makes me think that maybe they didn't put it there, that somebody else did. Maybe the, uh, the last person to service this. Or maybe they just decided they were going to have some fun with the wheel repair guys and just put one in anyway. I don't know. But it is curious. Usually you'll find, if they're using them, they're going to use them throughout the reel. Um, even if they use four or five different sizes of them. Shimano or a vet or those kind of use that kind of approach on some of their reels that they've decided to use the Torx screws on. This is what I was saying about the Phillips head. I'm having a little bit of a tough time grabbing the slot and holding it in place. The Phillips head certainly makes that job easier. All right, that's done. Let's take our rotor, put that right back on. Now, sometimes you're going to find the rotors uh, go on last because the side plate goes up and under. In this case, that, that's not the way it works. And then uh, let's go ahead and put this on. Now, this is going to go on in a traditional right-handed turn and clockwise turn, righty-tighty kind of approach. Tighten that down. Give this a spin. Make sure it's spinning nice and easily, which it is. Go ahead and get that uh, collar then. Let's go put the tie down on. Looks like I missed by just a little bit of a hair here, so take a moment to just align that the right way. Go into your parts tray because you know that's where it is. Get that screw that goes on to hold the collar down. And then we can move on to setting the gears inside. So the lethal is in the middle of the range of uh, the fishing reels. It's a nice, nice setup. And uh, it's just looking for the ball bearing. I had put that bearing in there, turned the case over, and it came, gave me a panic moment there. All right, working backwards then. Let's get the cross wind gear. Again, a good amount of grease. This one gets grease on all sides because it touches everything. You want some on the back for the slide, in the hole for the slide, on the face so that the crosswind gear can ride easily on that. Set that inside. Here's your crosswind block that's going to ride on that gear. That only needs grease on the back side. Nothing else is going to come in contact with anything, or at least shouldn't come in with anything. We've already greased and inspected the main gear, so that can go in next. And I just noticed I didn't have it on the stud there. And now let's go ahead and grab the axle shaft, a light coat of grease onto the axle shaft. Find the flat side of the axle shaft that generally points forward when you go in to insert that into the crosswind block. Bring it down. Align that so that you can find the hole. And then go and get that silly torque screw from your case. Now again, I don't know why I got one screw here that is Torx, but there you go. Let's just line that up. You know, Penn used to be famous for reusing parts. That's why you'll find that there's so much interchangeability in the parts in the older pen reels. It's because, well, whatever they had in surplus, they just designed that into the next facet of the reel. And uh, well, sometimes it just didn't make a lot of sense other than it was an economical move to uh, conserve and use all the pieces and parts that you had. That was particularly true during the war years, the war being World War II. And, uh, you know, you didn't have a lot of new pieces of parts. You were mostly taking your efforts and uh, put them into the war effort. And the, uh, whatever parts you could use the in inventory was something you were certainly going to do. I just read a nice little article. I found it in the Orca website. It was about the role of Shakespeare in the war effort. And it looked like most of 
or some of the parts that Shakespeare had converted their factory in Kalamazoo to, was actually for making these cables to, well, do things, everything from uh, release a bomb door hatch to, an, uh, to a throttle cable. They were all flexible cables that uh, enabled you to get around some certain objects in order to drive or control certain things. And well, that was one of the things that Shakespeare was doing. I also read an article not too long ago about Shakespeare dating on models and uh, because they, uh, they converted so much of their factory to the war effort, they weren't releasing a lot of new models in uh, the war years. Uh, but what they did, they had a coding system, there was an alpha, alpha coding system. They would change the model year, but not change the model, and they were showing you how certain model uh, Indicators would say that the reel was 1941, but then if you looked on certain stampings on the model and the like, it would tell you that it was 42 or 43 or 44 and so on. All right, a little bit of penetrating oil onto the seam of the knob. That's spinning nicely. Let's go ahead and put the handle back on. And let's go over to that spool that we have here with all that grease on it. So grease is not necessarily a bad thing for drag washers. I know a lot of folks think it's about uh, slip and slide and smoothness of drag operations and things like that. Really not. It's really about keeping the drag washers from drying out and cracking. In this case what we have is a carbon tex washer in here and those are optional. You can uh, you can grease those or you can leave those alone. That's at your discretion. Well, I took that off and I noticed that the first thing is that that geared washer on the base is the first one in. So we're gonna have an geared washer followed by a uh, drag washer and it's gonna line up this way and that makes sense. You wanna start and finish in this case with the, the metals. So let's clean these off. The recommendation on carbon tex is mixed. You can put the grease on it or you can leave them or you can lightly grease them and um, wipe off the excess. I'm just going to leave them. I generally run carbon tex washers dry. The ones that are round are called keyed washers. Notice this one is thicker than the other one that, that rests below. That's because that's going to act as the cap washer on top and that's going to be the one that the the drag adjuster knob is going to interface with and so they don't want that one to bend so they make that a little bit thicker. Okay, those are your drag washer assembly starting with the eared washer alternating the drag washer with the metal washer. Go ahead and find the slot for the clip then. Put that all the way around. Insert that. Let's put this back on our freshly oiled spool bearings. Seat that down deeply. Tighten this up. Give it a test. So we know we smoothed out the bail operation. That was simply oiling and probably flushing out a little bit of dirt or salt that may have accumulated in those seams. And that's uh, a lot of times people who are amazed will bring me a reel, say that oh, the bail's not firing all the time or things like that. I just grab a can and uh, spray it down. Show them, uh, you know, how to flush it out like that, and uh, thank them for their business and turn them on at no charge. Just kind of a learning experience there. Okay, here we go. We're, we're tight on the drags. We're going to test the reel, but then I'd like to loosen that drag back up. Let's give it a spin. That spins nice and free and easy. Again, this is the Finor LT40, and uh, we already saw that the bail was going to flip. That's how to service the reel and how to keep it fishing for you for the next season. I do recommend an annual servicing on all fishing reels and uh, now you know how to do it yourself to keep your reel fishing and uh, do it on a timely manner. So to all of our first responders and essential personnel, thank you for everything is that you do to keep us safe. And to everybody, thanks for watching today. I wish you the best of fish, fishing and uh, have a great day. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle.